Shut up and sit down. Hello, friends, and welcome to The Psychology Of. This is the show where we look into the psychology in video games to see if there's anything we can learn or use to our advantage. And we do that by answering a few basic questions. Number one, what's the goal of the game? Number two, what are the game mechanics being used? Number three, what does the game ask the player to do? Number four, why is this game a challenge to players? Number five, what is happening or needs to happen in the mind of the player? And number six, how can the player use all of these things to their advantage? Today's episode, the psychology of the Binding of Isaac. What is the goal of the Binding of Isaac? After you sit through the introduction to the game, which you can skip by pressing the space bar, shh, keep it secret, keep it safe. The goal of the Binding of Isaac is obvious. The player needs to clear all the levels and defeat mom. What are the game mechanics being used? When you spawn in, the first thing you'll notice is the control description on the floor of the room. It's best to practice coordinating your left and right hands before moving on. And as you move on in the next room, the layout and the monsters will randomly generate, although there typically is a theme for each floor. A few of the things that show up on all the floors are three special rooms, like stores, uh. secret rooms, arcades, and golden rooms, all providing potentially life-saving aid to the player. In each of these rooms, you can find various environmental hazards and benefits. Blue rocks, like the one in this room, give sp helpful items. Other environmental hazards are poo. Yes, I said poo. And, and even more poo. On each floor amid the various items and poo can be found items that will either help you or confuse you in your quest to stay alive, like cards. Coins, bombs, keys, and random pills. None of which a young child such as Isaac should be playing with, but then his mom is trying to murder him, so perhaps any port in a storm. And finally, there are boss fights, which the player can expect at least once per floor. So what does the Binding of Isaac ask the player to do? The player must survive six floors filled with random rooms, battle monsters with various abilities, to find items and weapons so that they can defeat mom. The game also asks the player to adjust their playstyle and strategy as they come across new items and monsters and weapons if they wish to proceed. Sticking to one particular strategy is practically suicide in this game. Why is this a challenge to players? The large scale of variety in items, rooms, and monsters create a new playing experience each time the player begins a game. So the player must try new strategies, take risks, and overcome weaknesses in their character, all while dodging mom's high heels. So what is happening in the mind of the player during all this? The game is the equivalent to a total mind workout. The moment you walk through the door, your conscious mind will be trying to decide the best strategy for the room and how it affects long-term survival as you head toward mom. Your subconscious will be supplying all the knowledge it can find in your memories that may be similar or relevant to what you are seeing and to supply information necessary to make those decisions. Your subconscious will also do its best to predict patterns and causal links based on those memories and what you are currently experiencing. For example, if you've ever found yourself asking, how did that happen? It makes no sense. It may be because your subconscious made some predictions about the game based on incomplete or false information. It may also be because the game is cheating. How can the player use these things to their advantage? It's easy to get overwhelmed when playing a new game because of all the new and crazy things you will find. But the variety built into the game means that there are multiple ways to clear each room and each floor. Each monster will have at least one weakness in either their movement, attack, or defense. So the player's focus should be on their character strengths, the buffs, the items, natural and gained abilities, and how to use them most effectively. Each time you play, your subconscious will draw on more specific memories and more efficiently bring them to, you, to mind, allowing you to make better decisions about both short-term and long-term strategy. 
Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Psychology of the Binding of Isaac. I hope you'll join me next time as we look at more of The Psychology of. Shut up and sit down.